So I would like to ask all of you to take your seats. And so we are going to start the last panel, panel of our meeting. At the very beginning, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Roman Romanov. I'm the member of the Renaissance Foundation Human Rights and Justice Program Initi Initiative, and I'm the director. I think this panel is a logical continuation of the discussion which we had within the previous panels because we partially touched upon the fact that misdemeanors should in a certain way influence the volume of work and they should influence the organization of work of pretrial investigation bodies. So, and they should ensure the more effective investigation process and our topic refers to a very specific problematic issue regarding the suspension and termination of criminal proceedings. So as I used to be a member of many discussions during the discussion of the uh, draft of the criminal procedure code five years ago and I remember the volume of discussions, disagreements that were related to the fact that at the draft law, at that time a draft law, there was a proposition to reject the stage of initiating the criminal proceedings. So there was a significant discussion regarding corruption and other risks which should be avoided. And as a result now, and this is the logical outcome of the significant amount of information which is input into the Unified Pretrial Investigation Register. So we have got statistics which show the workload on the investigators. So and this workload is very, very high. And the criminal proceedings which statistically we can see have got certain perspectives of being resolved, being opened. And there is a question that what effective decisions can we e expect? Who, how and in what way should suspend and terminate such proceedings? How we can minimize the risks, minimize the risk associated with the high level of discretion powers? Who should be able to do that? So we see the statistical data uh, which was provided in Mr. Mr. Havranyuk's presentation. The majority of proceedings were carried out by the NPU and the Unified Pre-Trial Investigation Register. So this is the responsibility of the prosecution. So what are the bases? What mechanisms we need? What practical decisions we need? So what legislative decisions we need? So all these things are being discussed. What is the position of the parliament, of the scientists, of the educational specialists? And this is the uh, spectrum of the, the of the questions which we would like to discuss during the panel. I would like to ask all the speakers to follow the timeline as much as possible in order for us to have some time for the discussion with the audience. So to have a discussion with people to have the discussion with people who have actually stayed here. So I would like to have these discussions to uh, last. I would like the speeches to last for five or six minutes. So I think it's not worth actually spending time on the problems because the problems are more or less understandable. We would like to hear the solutions which can be a subject for the discussion. And once again, he represents the expert group police under control. I would like to give the floor to our first speaker, Mr. Fabian Lovenberg. Thank you very much. Um, so my name is Fabian, as you know already. Um, I, um, I'm a German lawyer um, and uh, as a criminal defense lawyer for many years in Germany I worked and uh, since a couple of years I'm working in the international um, uh, uh, advising um, and peacekeeping missions. I was in Afghanistan and in Kosovo, and my third station is now here in Ukraine. So um, I want to speak about um, 
suspension and uh, closing of investigation and cases because it's a very relevant subject here. And um, if you just follow my presentation, um, I think uh, if you see the problems what we have here in Ukraine is that you have overloaded investigation investigators. So you have a uh, wasting of capacities. You know, uh, we all spoke about it already, um, and especially on cases which have no relevance um, anymore. The so-called closed cases, uh, cold cases, we have no legal possibility to close them and to get rid of them. So they are uh, on the desk uh, and uh, always just, you know, um, a burden for the investigators. Um, also, cases where you have no suspect uh, identified are staying also uh, on the table of the investigators. Uh, so this is a situation. Um, problems we have then, um, legal problems and problems also in the uh, practice with suspension of investigations and closing of investigations. And just maybe before we go further, um, just to highlight how important this um, closing, of uh, closing of investigations and closing of cases, um, I just can only speak for Germany uh, as an example of a European country, but um, more or less 80% of all cases coming into the uh, system are um, closed by prosecution office or by police or even then uh, uh, by police or prosecutors during investigation. That means only 80%, 20% of the cases are going to uh, uh, get prosecuted and coming to the court. When you're looking at the court, the court also uh, dismiss or 50% uh, of the cases. So they are just plea agreements or other agreements where you, that at a court level, then reduce these cases as well. So at the end, not many cases are uh, solved by, um, um, uh, are solved by the court. So the main closing of cases are in the prosecution stage or investigation stage, and then also in the court level they are uh, closing a lot of cases. So that makes the system efficient, um, and it has to be also efficient. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're just dealing with too many cases and this is not efficient. And this is also related, uh, thank, thank you also Roman for highlighting that, with the uh, minor cr crimes, uh, because this is also a burden and um, uh, just also statistics from Germany, 12% of all the cases are uh, solved by simplified procedures. Um, this is also taking a burden away, uh, again, just in, in addition to what we discussed before. Um, but now more to the subject. Um, so first of all, you have the possibility to suspend cases, and uh, this is also very relevant to uh, um, reduce the workload. And um, so this is, um, uh, I think, art, uh, uh, Chapter 23 regulated, and especially Article 280, um, and there are certain uh, reasons for that, for especially um, when you're the suspect is serious ill, or he hides from investigation, or um, an investigating judge has rejected an initiative to conduct it, or um, procedural actions within the framework of international cooperation are necessary. So you can stop these cases according to these reasons. Um, but um, mentioned reasons to suspend uh, investigations serve only the investigations in which suspects are identified. And this is a problem. So, But if suspect is not found, the cases still remain open and cannot be suspended, which uh, leads to unnecessary accumulation of cases on investigation records. And if you look, for example, in, uh, in um, the example of European practice, so we have, for example, Czech Republic, Poland or Germany, I mentioned already, um, so that there is a possibility that the prosecutor uh, shall also defer the investigation if they failed to establish the facts justifying the initiation of criminal prosecution. And if the grounds for the deferral passed, the criminal prosecution will be initiated. So there are solutions, very clear legal solutions, which we also recommend in Ukraine. And um, so we have a very, we have a just discussed a proposal how we would like to do it, and I will discuss it with you. So for example, we can amend Article 280 of the Criminal <coughs> Procedure Code Part 2 as follows. Pre-trial investigation can be suspended if all necessary and possible investigation actions have been taken, but the person who committed the crime was not found. This is just a suggestion uh, how to just reduce a lot, uh, a lot of workload from investigators. Talking now about closing and termination of cases, um, you have also uh, in the um, three forms of closing and terminating of pre-trial investigation according to the Criminal Procedure Court is uh, to close an investigation as such, as Article 284, and it gives nine reasons for that. 
uh, to apply to a court with request to exempt a person from criminal proceedings and to apply to a court with an indictment act. Um, this is also for sure um, a completion more than a termination, completion of the case which goes to the next stage. Um, but closing reasons, and you know they are, it's a little bit small to read, but I think you all know that, I do not repeat them, there are nine um, uh, reasons to close a case, for example, abs absence of occurrence of criminal offense, or absence of an element of criminal offense, or especially no sufficient evidence. So there are a lot of reasons how and how to close cases, um, but uh, unfortunately not police is, has the only authority to do that. So um, I think uh, there are two problems which I would like to discuss with you. Um, the first one is um, instead of closing cold cases after a statute of limitation is expired when all possible investigation actions are taken but perpetrator is not found, investigators yet have to keep doing formal investigations. Um, so this is a problem because um, even if, if the statute of limitation is expired, there is no possibility. Uh, statute of limitations, Article 49 of the Criminal Code, which says for different crimes, different statutes of limitations. So, but even if you just have this, you cannot close a case if no suspect is found. That means uh, you have a lot of cases where you have no suspect in which you cannot close, so we understand, but we can discuss it. And this, for sure, is a problem because there are a lot of cases like that. And what to do with these cases? Can you just archive that case and then reactivate if you find a suspect, or do you close it after the statute of limitation is reached or not? Um, so these are the problems which need to be discussed. Second problem is um, the CPC does not allow closing a case after the statute of limitation is expired. Ah, this is what I mentioned. Um, Maybe just to um, summarize again what we suggest, what, how you can solve that gap is that you can maybe amend, this is also a suggestion which needs to be discussed, Article 284, in that sense, closing criminal proceedings and proceeding against legal enterprise with additional point 10, and this would be then statute of limitations prescribed by uh, Criminal Code Article 49, expired and the person committed criminal offense is not found. So th if you just have a, as a ten, the tenth reason for closing cases, that would, from our opinion, from the mission opinion, reduce really the workload of um, investigators. So that would be just for discussion, some kind of very practical um, ideas and proposals from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the international experience and looking from the uh, this problem from the international point of view. Thanks for the analysis done by the EUM and thanks for the specific proposals. And now we have got an opportunity to listen to the presentation of the Ukrainian MP, Ms. Alena Sotnik. So, Verkhovna Rada and the Specialized Committee has started working on this topic, so, and the question is, can practical specialists expect certain support from the legislators with regards to the proceedings, investigation, uh, which are problematic? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you very much. First of all, I would like to say that I'm not uh, deeply informed about the opinion of our specialized parliamentary committee. At least I did. I haven't seen such discussion of such initiatives in the parliament or in the committee. But from the point of view of the situation that we currently observe in Ukraine, as a rule, we have a, a, a bright example for termination or suspension of proceedings. The, these are proceedings related to previous uh, regime in the country of Yanukovych. And that's a, a vivid example, a case demonstrating an example of a suspension or closure, termination of cases where there's high manipulation or, or which is applied uh, sometimes in circumstances when there are no reasons for its application. What I mean, uh, there are two key problems. Is the problem of a qualitative nature or institutional problem? and that's related to prosecution 
including the Prosecutor General's office, because if we mean these cases, they are they fall under the jurisdiction of the Prosecutor General's office, and we observe very interesting things where a number of procedural activities could be taken, but they are not made, and uh, just under the reason that the person is missing or is on the wanted list, or there are some international activities, international cooperation activities, the criminal proceedings are suspended. Uh, we recently sent a whole number of requests on that subject, and we're trying to realize, to, to clarify circumstances and the status or the progress of those uh, proceedings. Uh, a case of uh, Lukash, uh, which was suspended, a case of Zaharchenko, Pshonkar, and many other controversial representatives of previous regime. So in this case, we uh, realize that it's not always about the legislative framework, but also about the institutional nature of the problem there is a law but also the question is uh, on about the application of that law there are two uh, absolutely different uh, moments uh, approaches it's about manipulation of the law the law when it's supposed to be applied is not applied or vice versa it's it is applied when there are no uh, legal reasons for that it's uh, when we speak about the suspension speaking about the termination of proceedings uh, really there is a, a very huge amount of open or pending criminal proceedings and there is certain psychological fear or apprehension uh, from the side of law enforcement officers to initiate closure or termination when it's not possible to identify a suspect and this uh, also applies to courts when there is very poor evidence or when there is there is no opportunity to prove the guilt of a person in the cor in the course of court hearing uh, uh, our law enforcement uh, officers they just uh, are afraid of terminating a case or they are just afraid of recognizing their loss or defeat on the case. So I already mentioned institutional problems, which is uh, linked to a backlog or delay with the reform in the prosecution system. But uh, speaking broader uh, about the termination and suspension of proceedings, I would also uh, touch upon such problem as entry or failure to enter information about proceedings into the unified register as today it's also linked and interconnected uh, where in fact we have some termless or endless criminal proceedings so broadly speaking until a suspect is identified established it can take months or years and in fact criminal proceedings they remain in the register and there are certain limitations uh, either for some legal entities or assets and the suspects are not identified. I would also consider that uh, as one package and because these issues are interconnected and closely linked. Speak about the unified register of pretrial investigations, it's also a very uh, pressing issue and the principle of uh, automatic registration of all the proceedings is a myth. Uh, in fact, uh, only 30% of cases are registered and uh, uh, very often we uh, need to demand or to request that the case is registered uh, with the unified register going through the court. And I think it's also, to a certain extent, kind of a selective approach when investigators or prosecutors decide whether it should be included in the register or it should not be. A termination of proceedings is one of the tools of reducing so-called artificial uh, workload or burden on investigation authorities and 
I think we need to address both the uh, legal framework improvement in legislation, uh, but also institutional improvements, awareness raising, professional training, so that people clearly understand the reasons, apply those reasons if, if they arise, and this was, would reduce uh, the workload on the investigation authorities and would f release resource to focus more on some relevant cases, proceedings, and to avoid some cold cases, as we say, that are not promising. Thank you very much for your report, for your presentation. I, I think it would be logical to invite uh, Mr. Yuri Danilchenko into our discussion. We've heard that really the problem is not only about legislative framework, but also about the practice, practices and practical application. We've heard that there are reasons to think about certain uh, manipulations when in some situations uh, there are no proper reasons and uh, the proceedings are not terminated, while in other cases they don't take certain investigative activities which results in situations that, well, that some proceedings or some cases that could be uh, solved are not solved. So we would uh, like to hear from you if you see uh, clearance and uh, about this uh, issue uh, from the prosecution's perspective and is it really about legislative changes or is it, as Olena said, about professional training of employees and, and also institutional capacity within the pretrial investigation authorities, prosecution system. So please, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So dear participants of the conference, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for the invitation to take part in the discussion of the relevant issue with regards to the termination and suspension of criminal proceedings uh, without a suspect at the stage of the pretrial investigation. The importance of the problem is related uh, to the fact of the increased workload of criminal proceedings per uh, investigators. According to the official data, the bodies of the National Police of Kharkov region include 556 investigators who investigate more than 85,000 of criminal proceedings. The average workload per one investigator makes 153 criminal proceedings. So in certain territorial areas of the National Police, this indicator reaches 690 criminal proceedings per one investigator. And the situation with the, uh, in the prosecution borders is the same. So each prosecutor works on average on 239 criminal proceedings, and the maximum workload can reach up to 837 proceedings. The provided indicators have got a growing tendency, and therefore having the institution of the suspension of the un unresolved cases is very reasonable to, uh, because the major part of the work of the investigator is focused on the investigations when the suspect is not identified. So, and this generates the number of cases which are not resolved, and therefore, under such conditions, the investigator doesn't have an opportunity to formalize an intermediary interim decision, even if all the necessary actions have been implemented. At the moment, the investigator faces a task of resolving and directing to court from 150 to 700 proceedings, and therefore legal definition of algorithm of actions. So in case if a suspect is not identified, then we'll have necessary the following advantages. So reducing the unnecessary workload. So providing the investigators with the legal instrument uh, instruments for the legal suspension of criminal proceedings, improvement of the supervisory functions, legislative implementation of the criminal proceedings closing without a suspect at the stage of the pretrial investigation should be reconciled and agreed with other law enforcement bodies. So with the opportunity to work on cases when there is no a suspect. So conducting investigative and 
search activities by the operative units as uh, directed by the investigator. So the issue with regards to possible extension of the legal field with regards to the closure of certain categories of proceedings at the stage of the pretrial investigation should be considered and considered as the criminal legal. So the task of the Criminal Code of Ukraine is to ensure legal protection of the rights and freedoms. The Criminal Code of Ukraine defines the crime and explains that minor actions are not crimes, misdemeanors are not crimes. And therefore, I would like to uh, draw your attention to the fact that we need to provide the investigators with the right to close certain, ca certain cases and proceedings which according to the code of, U of Ukraine, criminal code of Ukraine, are not minor. So consideration of the issue on the opportunity to extend the legal field is a closure of certain categories of proceedings and the issue of decriminalization of certain actions or decriminalization of other issues is not being considered. Therefore, I support the possibility of extending the legal field for the termination of certain categories of, of proceedings at the stage of pre-trial investigation. So, and I oppose the idea of providing additional opportunities to close the proceedings for this category regardless of the criteria which are being used. So, and I would like to support the opportunity of uh, having the Institute of Criminal Proceedings when the suspect is not identified. We've heard a presentation from the representative of prosecution, and I, I think it would be also interesting to hear representatives of science, of M Mr. Kunti, have you explored uh, this issue, or probably some scientific institutions have explored this subject. Uh, your institution, what would be your position, whether we need to change uh, legislative regulation, and what's your attitude to expanding the number of reasons for termination of cases and suspension of proceedings? Uh, those cases, uh, reasons that were mentioned, by Mr. Danilchenko, or more, probably you have some additional ideas that you could present for discussion. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants. So, so speaking about the suspension and termination of proceedings, uh, we need to say that there were some latest changes in in the procedure in the code on the 16th of March 2017. Uh, there is also a number of draft laws have been registered, uh, 6220, the latest one, but let's not stop on these ones, let's discuss the existing ones, and I will provide several examples and decisions that could be made in, uh, in this situation. First situation I would like to touch upon is when, during the pre-trial investigation, a person did not receive a notice of suspicion, but in the course of investigation it was established a, a, a material number, a sufficient number of evidences to prove that the person committed an offence, criminal offence. So there is no reason to terminate uh, since, uh, since there is no notice of suspicion. The practice, practical man, they say that instead of notifying on suspicion, they just file up or execute uh, a written notice. So uh, we think, uh, and then they c uh, terminate the proceeding, uh, we think that uh, we could use some procedural decision that the effect of the service of this notice could be made with a defense lawyer. Another example is in, in, in uh, certain categories of cases when an official, uh, responsible official receives information about delivering of a person with some bodily injuries, minor ones, and investigator is supposed to immediately within 24 hours to initiate a criminal proceedings 
criminal case. If in the course of pretrial investigation it, it is established that these bodily injuries were caused by some relative of the, sus of the victim and the victim refuses to file a report against such relative, so there will be no uh, notice of suspicion or accusation and we could do some changes. So if a victim refuses to report uh, the case, uh, this case could be subject to termination. Another example, another aspect I would like to discuss is uh, uh, about covered searching activities and information that is received as a result of covered searching activities. So if some elements of criminal offense are established, this information could be used as part of other criminal case, not only provided there is a decision of an investigative judge. So investigative judge is supposed to give his authorization. There are cases when during the covered searching activities, as an example, getting information from some transport and telecommunication networks when a crime is committed immediately. An investigative judge is supposed to consider it uh, uh, within 24 hours, so it should be uh, unimpaired uh, pretrial investigation. We propose that this investigation uh, should be started, but if the judge rejects the motion from the prosecutor, such uh, proceeding, such case can be terminated. And lastly, it's about servicing a copy of a decision on termination of criminal proceedings, which presupposes that it should be delivered to the um, reporter, to the victim, and to the suspect. It, it can be appealed, challenged by representatives of a victim or authorized representative. So this needs further improvement uh, and regulation uh, legislatively at the legal level. And, and uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for your ideas and your proposals. So, Mr. Evgen Krapivin, so expert of the uh, member of the expert group police under control. I think you have got the most complicated role after the figures provided by Yuri. So that the investigator can have up to 800 criminal proceedings and you try to control people who are working really hard and they are really overloaded with this number of proceedings and knowing the tasks that they have got. So apart from the control, what proposals does the civil society have towards which can help in the solution of this problem? So what do you think on that? Thank you very much. Good afternoon. As I'm the last speaker today, I would like not to repeat what has already been said, but I would like to focus on the thoughts with regards to the institutional factors of these problems, problem, the uh, factors which have been mentioned by Mrs. Sotnikova. So, okay, everybody understands that police is dealing with the general criminality, general uh, criminal cases, so, and high profile cases which are being presented in the media. They are also done by the police. So, and very rarely, the ordinary residents of Ukraine know about the everyday uh, activity and work of police. And I'm talking about the work of the operative and investigative bodies. As has been said by Olena, uh, investigators are really afraid of uh, terminating the proceedings. The courts are afraid of making decision, decisions and therefore the issue of terminating and suspending the proceedings. So this issue is much more wider than some other problems. So, and, and this institutional factor is much more stronger with, in this respect. So, as we know, the courts don't provide the 
acquittals and they can make up to only 1% of all the decisions made by the courts and therefore uh, the stage of accepting or declining the person guilty so is pushed from the court to the pretrial investigation state so and what has been selected by the court will automatically mean the guilt of the person so and forwarding the indictment to the court so also the decision itself is being made at the previous stage around 90 percent of the proceedings when a person has been notified of suspicion so then these decisions are transferred to the court followed by the indictment then it means that the entry point is the notification of suspicion and criminal proceedings criminal proceedings under which the suspects have been notified of suspicion. So these are the cases. So we'll be, we'll have success in terms of protection uh, in court. So, and all that shows that at the stage when we register the statement, when we have got the de detention according to Article 280, so and registration in the unified register. So this is actually the everyday work of the police, and the case should be should be such a case that it will be brought to court. So we all know about the problems which are related to actually hiding the crimes from registration, from recording, so using certain filters for putting the cases into the unified register. So all the situation, when we have got lots of detentions which are happening according to the article 280 and that happens in the office of the investigators and all that is the re reason of the system of the stimulus indicators so and the specific decisions which can be discussed which can assist with the implementation of uh, this reform so misdemeanors reducing the workload of investigators so essentially we need to change the system of stimulus for the investigators so first of all I'm talking about the evaluation of the efficiency of investigators work so about Two years ago, the order on the evaluation of the evaluation of the efficiency of investigators' work have been abolished. So, and for example, if we are talking about the district police officers, so who work with standard thieves, they said that it used to be a really big problem. So they don't have a different system of an evaluation right now. So the system which existed for 40 years can be effectively changed within one day and the draft order of the Cabinet of Ministers is being developed based on the trust level and unfortunately it won't have a significant impact on the evaluation of the work of the investigators. The prosecutor has got the same evaluation system which again was developed under the Soviet period of time and therefore overcoming this institutional practice and elimination of the practice when the managers require certain indicators to be reached by their subordinates so and the second institutional aspect is the article 200 14 of the CBC, so a mechanism of automatic registration of the criminal proceedings. So, and this is exactly the reason why this system doesn't work. So, if the criminal proceeding is in the unified register, then we are not able to terminate the proceeding based on the available reasons. So, and the big problem is that at this stage, we have got certain manipulations, filters being used, hiding. So, and of course, there are no legal acts which would stipulate and regulate these aspects. 
so, and with the establishment of the detectives' positions, we won't be able to overcome such a practice. And therefore, my recommendation for this experiment with the detectives. So changes in the number of staff in training events. So we need to overcome these informal practices, which unfortunately still continue being effective in police and the prosecution bodies. So, and it's not only, this is the problem which has been highlighted not only by the police officers, scientists, and we have to explain these problems to the international community, to the international experts, as they don't know this. So, because they haven't had this experience like the post Soviet countries. So, the number of indicators, so for example, the number of cases at the pre trial investigation borders. So, this is the practical specific recommendation. So, implementation of the mechanisms so to ensure automatic uh, registration of uh, proceedings in the unified register. So, and what we discussed today, the criminal misdemean misdemeanors, so reduction of the uh, workload on the investigators, improvements in the Article 284. So, but this will take two or three years of, years of time. Thank you. So we've heard all of our speakers in this panel, and I thank all of them for a wide range of ideas that we've heard, and also for a, for keeping to our time limitations. This gives us opportunity to have additional time for discussion and to involve our audience into discussion. I'd like to draw your attention that I was making some notes and some verbs that were used by various uh, speakers. So we've had expansion, improvement, improving, uh, dismantling, eliminating. So we have the opportunity for some comments, feedback and questions. I would kindly ask that everybody speaks not more than two, three minutes, keeping to the time limit that we have to be able to answer as many questions as possible. Please, uh, but first let me ask you who would like to use this opportunity to put the question, please raise your hands, and I could see all the hands, all those who want to put questions. Okay, thank you. So, uh, within three minutes, please ask your questions. Good afternoon. A National Academy of Prosecution. First of all, about the suspension of proceedings. There were some particular proceedings mentioned from a uh, representative of the parliament. Uh, I want to explain that we have uh, such provision as provision about secrecy of investigation and only investigators or prosecutors may know the circumstances from particular case files about the reasons for termination of proceedings and what activities were made and including investigative searching activities and other reasons for suspension of uh, criminal proceedings. Uh, as for my question, my question is to Mr. Fabian. I would like to ask you, you propose changes to Article 280 of the Criminal Procedural Code and you propose to envisage general as general reason for suspension of proceedings such as possible investigative searching activities in, in, in the course of in pre-trial investigation. Currently our CPC has a limited list of reasons for suspension uh, of cases of proceedings and uh, procedural activities are a mandatory condition. So the question is, don't you think that the number of suspended proceedings will be increased on condition that we have this uh, universal general reason for suspension of, of, of proceedings? So if we exclude this limited list of reasons, but just have this universal reason, thank you. Please, Mr. Levenberg. Okay, um, so 
if I understood you right, so uh, that you want to have a general um, reason just to suspend uh, cases, so and not uh, specified ones. Is this correct? So more a general reason, uh, the general reason to suspend cases, that you have a more discretion from pro uh, from prosecution side. Is it that your question you just asked? If I understood you correctly. Ukrainian CPC has uh, an exhaustive list of reasons for suspension of proceedings. You propose a general, like common reason, which also exists in the CPC, for some possible and necessary searching activities during the pretrial investigation if we exclude some specific reasons stipulated by our CPC. So what's your opinion? Don't you think that the consequence of this change would be an increased number of suspended proceedings if we have this general reason for okay. suspension yes, in place? Um, for sure, I think it would maybe lead to uh, a number of suspensions. And this is exactly what I think we should propose, that you have increasing of suspension in cases where you do not uh, cannot investigate, for example, when there is no suspect. So uh, I think this is then the question how to proceed with the suspended cases, because suspension, from my point of view, does not mean termination. That means if you just get new uh, evidences or if you just find a suspect, you can re, uh, uh, revive that case, so and can reactivate that case, and you continue. But the suspension, from my point of view, is uh, um, an instrument to reduce the workload of prosecutors. So, if possible, could you please pass the microphone? Thank you very much. So, uh, my question is to the representative of the BGO. I have got two questions. The first question is, my question is to Mr. Lovenberg. I have got the following question. In Germany, I think you also have got certain uh, cases when the criminal proceedings were closed illegally. In Germany, how do you solve this problem if the cases are closed illegally? So talking about the experience of Germany, can you explain what is the role of the public society, civil society, and, and their help in the resolution of cases and with the provision of necessary evidence which help to resolve the crime. So that's my question is also to other uh, participants. So if we're talking about the system of indicators, so that was always the case. So knowing our mentality, so nobody was able to invent a different measure to assess the efficiency or work of the uh, law enforcement bodies. So actually a number of cases resolved. That's the system which was used and is still being used. So this is still the system to assess the effectiveness of work of the law enforcement bodies. If you have got any other ideas how the evaluation system can be improved in the work of our system. Thank you very much. As you have addressed your question not only to one participant, but I would, then I would like to uh, give the floor for questions to other participants and then we can get the answers. So one question was to Mr. Lovenberg, and the second question was to all the other members of our yeah, okay, audience. Very, very quick about the German um, the German solution. So for sure we have uh, cases where uh, they're closed or terminate cases and it's not justified. In this case, we have a complaint mechanism, so the victim can always complain and then goes to the general prosecution officer to look at that case. And when they are bringing new evidences and things like that, they have to uh, start again that case. So there is procedures, even you can go to the court and let uh, prove that. But I think what is really important is, is always criminal defense lawyers who are doing that. So criminal defense lawyers then have a really crucial role because in this uh, uh, part they are acting as prosecutors, you can see. They are just checking what prosecutors did not and they are saying not everything was investigated, et cetera, et cetera. So they have to 
um, start that case again, but the criminal defense lawyers are playing a crucial role in that system, but this is a complaint mechanism we have. Дуже дякую. Щодо другого запитання, я дам можливість відповідати. As for the second question, I would uh, invite whoever wants to give the answer from the our speakers. Please, uh, some more questions. Uh, uh, I suggest we pick up another question and then I pass the f floor to speakers. I represent Prosecutor's General Office. Um, I would like to ask Mr. Yevgen and Ms. Olena, you said that almost 70% uh, of reports on criminal proceedings are not registered with the unified register. And Mr. Yevgen supported this proposal and, and proposed to introduce uh, some automatic me mechanism of automatic registration. Could you please expand and explain more? What, does, what do you mean by that? Because your, your colleague also mentioned that the court might reject the motion of the prosecutor, then the case should be suspended. But the criminal procedural code has a clear list of reasons when this, uh, the proceedings could be suspended or stopped. And if uh, an investiga investigating judge uh, rejects and we can suspend proceeding, don't you think that the investigation process will be stopped at all? Uh, Ms. Elena, please. First, I would like to answer your question. It's very simple. Uh, what it means is that uh, uh, Criminal Procedural Code, Article 214, and w which says clearly that all criminal, uh, all, all reports on opening of criminal proceedings should be, must be registered with the unified register, and that's called called automatic principle. So it's just a question of adhering to the law, following the law. In my practice, I have people addressing me, 80% of people who address me about the appeals against law enforcement. Most of these complaints are that uh, their cases were not, just simply were not included, were ignored and not registered with the unified register. They uh, use uh, various reasons and references to various legislation uh, as uh, the reason to avoid registration. If we have the problem with overloaded register, let's sort this problem separately. But there is a law in place, and let's follow this law. And if you allow me, also, we, we have such a rule. And I, I, I'm a fan of uh, time regulations. Uh, there's a right for feedback for for response. So, as uh, my, uh, as I was mentioned in the first comment by representative of the Prosecution Ac Academy, I would just advise to perform your direct function to improve qualification and skills of prosecutors, as well as educate the prosecutor general. Uh, so that information, which is a secrecy, so that it's not disclosed publicly in media, and requests uh, to MPs are public unless they are classified. And since General Prosecution Office gives me all the responses and they don't uh, categorize this information as classified, so I always publish and disclose this information publicly. Thank you. Uh, Just a small comment. So, um, concerns with regards to the order. So, with regards to the automatic registration of all the applications uh, with regards to the committed crimes. So, with regards to their registration in the unified register. So, if there is no content or event of crime, of crime so then you have got grounds, so point 1.2 of the Article 284 for the um, closing, for the termination of proceedings. So you have got legal grounds for that. So yes, we have got a problem and I have got due respect to our academicians from the Academy of the Prosecution Borders. So 
we can have a long discussion of the uh, of the, all the reasons for the registration of cases, and all these grounds are being used since 1960. And unfortunately, we still have got the problem with automatic registration of the applications. So the scientists says that there is no problem, and this is exactly what we meant together with uh, Alena. So if there is an application about the crime commitment, so then you don't have to wait for 10 days before registering that in the unified register, providing the persons with some formal, formal letters. So thank you very much. So I would like you to be as short as possible as concise as possible. I would also give a chance to, um, to ask once one more question. So, and then there is some presentation from the La Strada representative, and then we will draw our conclusion. So, your question, please. So, University of Internal Affairs, I have got several comments and a maybe a rhetoric question. So, in Article 214, not all applications are being registered, only those who have got the characteristics of the criminal violations. There are certain proceedings which require certain filtration mechanisms. So that refers to Article 309, where we are not able to check whether the substance of green color is a drug. So, and the same applies to the illegal trafficking in weapons, and therefore, there should be certain exceptions from this automatic initiation of proceedings. And secondly, if you're aware, in practice, artificially, we have got some documents which are called conclusions, so where, which are being used to formally respond to the applications because the investigators are being really overloaded. And if we refer to the statistics prov uh, provided by Mr. Yuri, so 800 proceedings, so, and that's not the limit. So the former graduate of the university in Odessa has got 1,700 proceedings, with the majority being uh, subject for termination. So, and therefore, there should be a certain filter, filtering mechanism to reduce the workload of the investigators. Thank you. So, let's not start a discussion, because the topic of our discussion is not opening a criminal uh, not opening criminal proceedings but actually closing or suspending proceedings and the last minutes of our discussion were diverted so i have started by saying that there is a certain interlink between these two stages and the maximum uh, availability of information if we think that a, a crime has been committed so this will actually cause a question of the efficiency of the termination and suspension of proceedings. I would like to ask you not to start a deep discussion on the issue, which is not the topic of our discussion today. And I think it also means that the EUM may consider of having an additional discussion devoted to such an issue because it causes a very vivid interest. So I promise that a representative of the La Strada will be given the floor. And as far as I know, you would like to make a very short presentation. So thank you very much. And thank you very much for the opportunity. I have got just two slides. And if possible, I would like to ask them being put on the screen. And as part of this discussion, I would like to add the gender component, so as a gender-based violence. This year, we finished the research, which we conducted together with the Geneva DCAF Center. And the research was focused on the evaluation of the readiness of our criminal justice system to respond to, to cases of the um, violence against women and domestic violence. We have received very interesting data and very interesting statistical data. Uh, once again, the practices, the practical specialists who work in this 
sphere, they were not surprised with the received results. So the main problems which have been identified uh, under reporting, so not actually reporting about the cases of violence against women. So if we talk about, if we say about that according to average assumptions, 1 million, 800, 1 million, uh, 1.8 million women aged from 15 to 49 experience domestic violence on uh, the yearly basis. Only 83,000 cases have been reported to police in 2015, and therefore we see a huge gap between the number of real cases and between the number of reported cases. So the next problem, the next one is actually closing or termination of uh, proceedings. So a very interesting case of rapes. In 2016, more than, from more than a thousand uh, cases of rape, only 61 perpetrator, perpetrator was convicted. And one more problem, so this is punishment, which is not a restricting factor. And based on the interviews which were conducted using the uh, national telephone line to prevent the domestic violence that our organization has got, so we realize that in the majority of cases, the system, uh, the response system that we have got actually leads to the to more severe cases of violence against women. So among the biggest problems, we have identified the problems which are related to the attitude. So what's factually written uh, with regards to the termination or suspension of proceedings. But on the other hand, we have got what's not written but what actually is in effect. This is the attitude towards the cases of domestic violence and violence against women. And very often the blame is being shifted towards the side of the victim. There is the level of mistrust, skepticism towards the information which is being provided by the victim and the importance and the relevance of the violence against women is being undermined. So the number of individual capacities so and institutional capacities which have been mentioned, so that's another problem. And here I would like to mention that this information, this understanding towards gender issues to ensure the participation of women in the solution of these issues related to the gender-based violence. The research has got 17 recommendations, and I think, if possible, these can be, they can be partially integrated into the recommendations of our event, of our platform. So, and having a look in at these topics from the gender point, so from the, uh, if we look at the membership, uh, membership of our speakers and moderators, we have got only one woman. And therefore, I have got a, requ a request to the EUM and to the OCEPCU to follow the gender approach. <laughs> so I, I still have got the request to increase the representation of women at such events. Thank you very much, and thanks for the gender component and for the recommendations to the EEM. So we will, we have already extended uh, the spectrum of our discussion and included the gender issues, and uh, it's worth having a separate discussion of this topic. So unfortunately, we don't have time to discuss this issue. And now I would like to come to the conclusion of our discussion. So we were able to look at the problem from different perspectives. 
So it is clear that these presentations don't give grants to have some uh, common understanding or common agreement which would make it possible to come to a conclusion or generalization. So, I, And it means that the discussion will be continued. And I think there are grounds to think that in different aspects, in different perspectives or dimensions, the situation and the problems can be improved based on the propositions which were made with regards to legislative regulation as well as the development of the institutional capacities. From my point of view, I would like to add that over a certain period of time and looking at the statistical data, I have realized that there are also some interesting trends for certain particular types of cases. So there are some certain periods of time which coincide with the period when these statistical reports are being developed. So even from the statistical point of view that this factor has got an influence on the statistical data, I'm not ready to comment on this situation because I think this again refers us to the system of evaluation and the impact of statistics on the evaluation of the effective effectiveness of the specialists and the efficiency of methods which are being used by the law enforcement bodies. And that again links us back to the previous sessions, which refer to the efficiency of the investigations. To a large extent, it is these are interrelated issues. I would like to thank all the participants of this conversation. And at the end, I would like to give the floor to Mr. Fabian. I'm supposed maybe to close the whole event now or to summarize now this panel, the whole event. Um, so just, um, I try just to, because we had a long day and I think it was really um, a, a very interesting debate. So we just discussed more or less three really urgent topics in criminal investigation. The first one was a merger of um, uh, capacities, especially um, to creation of a new uh, function of a detective and um, also functions and chain of command, especially the merger of operatives and investigators. And uh, I think this was uh, a very, uh, very good discussion. And I think the main outcome was um, that the further implementation of that um, ex merger experiment uh, is requested or is uh, uh, really needed. And um, there will also, if this is going well, this pilot project, there uh, will be an adoption of the legislation, so that is then also saved for for the future. So if the uh, management change in the in the police, so that this will continue uh, on this exper experience. And um, then also highlighted was uh, the um, I think the necessity of an ease case management for uh, which can be linked between police prosecution and courts. So this will be reduce for sure also the workload. Um, and also the improvement of training systems, um, educational establishment specializations uh, for for uh, certain crimes to uh, detect these and types of trainings needs to be, uh, and this will then ensure the, the uh, effective criminal investigations. Also was mentioned um, the introduction of um, more um, analysis uh, of crimes, so criminal analysis uh, into the practice of um, Ukraine law enforcement agencies as a instrument to effective um, uh, investigations. Um, I think that was um, the main outcome of the first session. The second session about simplified procedures, we had also a very intensive uh, discussion on that. And I think um, everybody understood that there needs to be some simplified procedures in place, how they will do that uh, through just changing uh, the criminal, pro uh, criminal procedure code or the criminal code um, the wording, maybe only minor crimes instead of misdemeanors. Um, that was discussed maybe in the new law on misdemeanors again, um, but also maybe a su suggestion from uh, our side, from EOM, strict uh, maybe to dis distinguish between administrative misdemeanors and crimes, minor crimes. It should be, crimes should be dealt with the criminal procedure code, um, misdemeanors maybe should be dealt not with the criminal procedure code, and just to find a solution there, but I think everybody understands there must be a solution for simplified procedures um, in place. Um, 
then um, I think criminal reform process was also mentioned, so um, how to uh, streamline that. So we had uh, heard that we have uh, uh, 500 draft laws to change criminal procedure uh, law in the last five years and 50 uh, changes of criminal procedure code. So this uh, seems to be, needs to be more coordinated and include all actors uh, just to do so and not based on single approaches, which has happened in the past. I think it was one of the main outcomes of uh, the second panel. Um, the third panel we just discussed, um, the closing of cases and also I think an overall understanding that uh, uh, there must be more uh, practice or more application of closing cases because there are a lot of cases um, are, are uh, uh, overburden the work of investigators so there must be a solution. There are certain uh, legislative framework maybe needs to adapt it. Uh, we also agreed on that but there should be also a practice uh, just using uh, in the right way so that there's also not a misuse of closing cases it was also pointed out and I think Olena Sotnik she uh, just make it clear very clear there are two things which we needed this is the first thing is just to uh, to to have changes in the law but also to have um, uh, support to implementation of uh, current procedures through trainings or, or whatever um, and I think that was uh, the main discussion and I think there's a lot of um, Discussions will ongoing on that because we have not have solutions, but we just uh, discuss a lot of uh, um, subjects and we need to continue to work. And I would like to invite you just to work with the mission and but also with other international organizations on that uh, on that subjects. But because we are here just to support you with our practices, what we have, and uh, thank you very much um, from my point of view to all of that. And I would like to hand over to our head of mission to make closing remarks. Окей, okay. uh, uh, от uh, рем, uh, то, что говорил Фаби, а не то, что говорили ребята мне там за дверью. What has been uh, summed up uh, by Fabian and what has been uh, said by our participants, I want to be optimistic because I again uh, I'm again convinced that Ukrainians, Ukraine has everything needed, everything in place professional people, experts, infrastructure, and uh, Ukraine is uh, doomed to success, uh, including the judiciary system. I've counted some five um, minor things. First, is it political will? Second, uh, the law. Uh, needed a necessary law and for that we need also political will and, and thirdly it's trust to each other force not to be afraid of making decisions and of taking responsibility and not to be afraid of making mistakes and number five is mutual respect the most important of this list is trust, mutual trust, because lack of trust kills everything. What we sometimes see when prosecutors are pointing at police officers and police officers at judges and they just try to avoid responsibility, it leads to nowhere and you need to start building trust step by step because only trust can be used as a foundation for the future and my last wish trust to is st start trusting to each other and start building everything on based on trust learn from each other and respect each other and everything will be successful and con your country will be successful and we'll be pleased to see that together with you and thank you very much for your participation in our forum.